with some free time during the day here at the Golden State Star Party, I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about powering the Sea Star and go over some of the things I think everyone should know about the care and feeding of the internal battery that comes with the Sea Star, and also to take a look at some options for providing power through an external power supply so you can extend the runtime of your Sea Star. Hi, I'm Curtis, and thank you for tuning into my channel. So in this video, I'm going to go through what I think you should know about the internal battery that the Sea Star uses. I'll go over its specs and explain why there are temperature limits that prevent you from charging below zero degrees C and discharging above 60 degrees C. In addition, I purchased specifically for this video two power banks that I thought are good candidates to use as external power supplies to work with the Sea Star to extend its runtime so you can run for several nights if you're like me away at a star party don't have the ability to recharge your batteries. The Sea Star battery pack is located in the base of the Sea Star in this beneath this plastic plate that is held on by two Phillips head screws. Now I suggest there's no reason for any of us to go in there and mess around with the battery. The only reason you would need to go in there is to replace the battery. And you can now get replacement batteries from Agena Astro. I'll put a link to that and everything else I discuss in this video down below where it says more. Just tap on that. You'll expand the text and you'll see the links there and that'll make it easier for you to find it. So leave it alone. Don't mess with it unless you need to replace it. The spec on the battery is six amp hours or 22.2 watt hours. So it's rated for about six hours and I'll go through my tests on the Sea Star and how long my battery lasted with and without the dew heater consists of two cells in parallel, each cell at 3.7 volts nominal. And by being in parallel, each cell is a three amp hour cell at 3.7 volts so by putting two in parallel, you get the six amp hour capacity, 22.2 total watt hours of capacity. Now you'll also notice that there are actually three wires coming off this thing, one for the plus, one for the minus on the voltage. So what's the third wire? The third wire is for a thermistor. The thermistor is there so that the C-Star can measure the temperature of the battery and shut down charging when the temperature of the battery goes below zero degrees C and shut down both charging and discharging when the temperature goes above 60 degrees. It's important if you're going to replace the battery pack in the Sea Star to get exactly the same battery type and specification. Don't try to find something similar on Amazon or doing a Google search. I searched all around to see if I could find that particular battery, even going to the manufacturer's website itself and I can't find that battery. And for the longest time, you couldn't find a replacement battery anywhere because ZWO was not shipping those batteries outside of China. But earlier this year, they became available on the Agena Astro website. Don't mess around with something you find on the internet that looks similar, but not exactly the same because we don't know how the thermistor is calibrated and whether the C-Star will be able to shut down at zero C and at 60 C like we want it to, to protect the battery from damage. So let me talk a little bit about lithium ion batteries, just so people understand what's going on. There's a lot of confusion since lithium ion battery technology is relatively new to all of us. Lithium ion refer is a generic term. It refers to many different types of lithium chemistries. Lithium iron phosphate, which is pretty commonly used as a 12 volt battery replacement for lead acid, is a lithium ion battery. And lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide, which is what's used in here, is also lithium ion battery. And also lithium cobalt oxide, and I can go on and on. There are a lot of different chemistries that use lithium ions to generate electric current, and they're all lithium ion batteries. Why did ZWO choose lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide? Well, because that's the chemistry that has the highest energy density, meaning you get a lot of energy 
with less weight than you would out of something like lithium iron phosphate. And that chemistry is very common in power tools, the e-bikes, and even many electric cars, including some models of the Tesla. And lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide, commonly called NMC, is considered a very safe lithium ion chemistry. So inside the C-Star is an electronic circuit called a battery management system or BMS. You'll find those in basically any lithium ion battery that you buy. And the objective of the battery management system is to make sure that all the cells in the battery pack, in this case to the two cells, get charged to the same voltage level and are balanced when the charging process is finished. And also to make sure that both cells discharge at the same rate so one doesn't run ahead of the other. The battery management system is also there to watch the temperature and to make sure the battery is not operated in unsafe conditions. C-Star will automatically shut down charging once we go below zero degrees C, and it will also shut down discharging and charging once the temperature reported by the thermistor inside the battery pack shows a temperature greater than 60 C. Now this graphic from the Department of Energy gives you a good idea of how lithium ion batteries work. During the discharge process, lithium ions over in the anode move across the separator between the anode and the cathode to the cathode where they release electrons providing the current we need to power our system. And during the charging process, the reverse happens where the lithium ions move from the cathode over to the anode. Now, when they get to the anode during the charging process, they need to tuck themselves in between the planes of graphite in the anode. And they do that by a process called diffusion and that requires thermal energy. So when the temperature starts to get lower, they have a harder time finding their way in between those graphite planes. And if the temperature gets too low, some of the lithium ions don't make it inside the anode, but instead plate out as lithium metal on the sides of the anode. And those lithium ions can potentially be lost for future use during the discharge process. In other words, we have loss of lithium capacity. Now that process doesn't suddenly happen at zero degrees C. It may also be happening at five or 10 degrees C, but at a much lower rate. It's exponentially dependent on the inverse of the temperature. So it's gradually happening as the temperature decreases. So all the manufacturers of lithium ion batteries chose a spec of zero degrees C that way they can guarantee that their batteries will last as long as they put in their specs. So in the case of a lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide battery, you should be able to get about 500 full discharge cycles out of it before the capacity begins to degrade. So long as you stay within the zero to 60 degrees operating spec. Now you can discharge this battery below zero degrees C. There's no cutoff. There's no automatic cutoff at any temperature, but ZWO recommends minus 10 degrees C as the lowest temperature to, to actually discharge the battery. And that's pretty consistent with specs for lithium ion batteries across the board. Now on the other end of the spectrum, when you get above 60 degrees C, you have a lot of thermal energy in the battery. Things start to break down, damage starts to occur. You will not only lose capacity, but you can potentially have a catastrophic failure in the battery in a fire. And that's why pretty much every lithium ion battery I've ever seen has both a high temperature charge and discharge cutoff. It'll automatically stop the internal battery from charging or discharging when the temperature gets above 60 degrees. So we have an automatic cutoff at 60 degrees C and God bless you if you're out in the field somewhere trying to do some imaging at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I think the high temperature cutoff limit is not anywhere close to where most of us would be operating the Sea Star. However, at the lower temperature limit, there are plenty of people that I see on the internet who run their Sea Stars down at minus 10 and below minus 10 degrees C, minus 20 degrees C. And that's possible because there's no cutoff on discharging below zero or minus 10 degrees C. You can discharge at any temperature you want. 
Now, that will degrade the battery as well. There are different mechanisms for degradation there, but that degradation will be slow and you might not notice it for a long time. And for some folks that live in the far northern regions who have to deal with temperatures well below minus 10 degrees C, they have no other option but to operate down at those low temperatures. So eventually those folks will have to replace the battery with a new battery pack when they find that the runtime is just getting way too short. So how long should you expect the C-Star to run on a night of imaging off the internal battery? Uh, ZWO says about six hours. I've done extensive testing on mine over several months and I consistently get around seven hours without the dew heater. With the dew heater on, I get six hours. Now that's higher than what they typically spec. I don't know if that's what you'll get out of yours. In fact, I've done some extensive testing of the internal battery pack and checking its capacity. Now the rated capacity, as I said earlier, is 22.2 watt hours. I've repeatedly charged this and measured the amount of energy going into it. And I get something like 28 watt hours consistently. So that's quite a bit more than the spec. So that explains why I'm getting seven hours out of this because the C-Star operating normally tracking and imaging a few objects throughout the night. Say you're operating in the plan mode. You're not doing a lot of moving around the sky. You're just moving to a few different targets and tracking those. It'll use about four watts. So at 28 watt hours divided by four watts, that matches the seven hours that I described. Now, if you're slewing around the sky, it uses about six or seven watts, but we're not slewing uh, a large portion of the time. So I think you're gonna get at least six hours in most cases and maybe seven. I don't know how consistent those battery packs are. Maybe I got lucky and I got a, a better battery pack than some, but I suspect the capacity is probably very similar for everyone else as it is for me. And I noticed that the C-Star will shut down somewhere around 8% state of charge, uh, sometimes at 10% and sometimes a little lower. It's not perfectly consistent, but that's the runtime I get. And I think you might get something similar. So what do you do if you need more than seven hours of runtime? Well, you can use an external power supply. The best way is if you have access to AC. Simply hook up a USB power supply to that and you can run indefinitely. And for those people who are wa working down at very low temperatures, if when you start the internal battery pack is fully charged, reading 100% state of charge, and you're supplying at least five volts at three amps through your external power supply, the C-Star battery won't discharge at all and it won't need to recharge and so for those of you who operate at very low temperatures, you don't have to worry about damage to the internal battery pack because you're not using that, the internal cells to run the C-Star. All the power is coming directly from the external power supply. Now, before we get into specifics of external power supplies, if you're gonna use an external power supply, I suggest you get one of these magnetic USB-C cables. This has a magnetic piece that attaches and lines to the pins on the cable and then fits inside the input, USB-C input to the C-Star. That way, if the cable snags, instead of breaking something on the circuit board inside, it just comes off and the C-Star and will operate on internal power until it runs out of internal power. No harm done. So get yourself one of these. I'll put a link to this down below. Now for lightweight and compact and low cost external power, I purchased these two power banks for testing with the C-Star. And I've tested them over the last six months. One is from Anchor and one is from Talent Cell. So the first uh, power bank I bought is the Anchor Power Core. Uh, what I like about this is it's very small and compact. It's only 8.6 ounces and it only costs 26 bucks. So this thing here has USB 2, USB mini, and also USB C. So we want the USB C to match up with the input on the uh, C Star. Of course, you can always use adapter cables. This supplies a maximum of five volts, three amps, so 15 watts, which uh, will work well with the C Star. 
it can actually be mounted like here. Uh, some people do these um, printed holders for external battery packs. If I'm going to mount it, I tend to use this 3M strip that interlinks one piece with the other. So you put one piece on here and one piece here, and then it locks together and then it's easy to take off. Not sure about mounting this with the C-Star in equatorial mode. You're adding a little bit more weight and strain to the gears, but in Alt-As mode, I don't think this would be a problem. And you could simply mount it here, and then you have the output of the, the USB-C output here, and the input is right over here. So all you need is a very short cable, and you don't have to worry about cable snag. Over several months, I use this multiple times, and it consistently adds 20 hours of runtime to the C-Star. So if I'm getting seven hours out of the C-Star, I'll get 27 hours if I have this hooked up to the C-Star and let it run over a series of multiple nights. So that's pretty doggone good for 26 bucks. And if I want to use this to recharge the C-Star battery from uh, cut off up to 100%, it takes about six hours with this thing to fully charge the C-Star battery. And it also takes about six hours to eight hours to recharge this with an external USB-C uh, power source. And for those of you who care about things like that, I believe this uses a lithium polymer cell inside, which is pretty common in our laptops and our uh, cell phones and so forth. Now, the other power bank I bought is the one from Talent Cell. Now, this one uses three lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide cells inside. So those are in series. So three times 3.7 is 11.1 volts. So while they say this is a 12 volt battery, it's really not a 12 volt battery. It's an 11.1 volt battery. And I say that because in addition to having a USB, in addition to having a USB-A uh, output and a USB-C in an output, it also has a DC output, which is common jack with uh, typical astronomy equipment. And so you can run some of your astronomy equipment off of it, so long as that equipment is not real sensitive to the voltage. So ASI Air, uh, ZWO's uh, AM5, AM3 will not work well with these three cell in series 3.7 volt battery packs. But we don't have that problem here because this thing operates at five volts and this will handle that just fine. So it has the ability to do five volts at three amp, but because it has the power delivery circuitry, it can do 15 volts at two amps. So it can actually pump out 30 watts of power. And that means it can fully recharge the C-Star battery in just two hours. Now, this battery pack, even though it's bigger and heavier, will only run the C-Star for an additional 16 hours, which is not bad, but it's not the 20 hours that you get out of this even smaller power bank from Anchor. So 16 hours for this, 20 hours for this, $26 for this, $35 for this. Because this one is significantly heavier, I'm not a fan of attaching it, even in Alt-As mode. Uh, I think you could in Alt-As mode, but it's getting kind of heavy and I wouldn't want to necessarily add all that weight. So this one I would definitely put on the tripod uh, spreader or on the leg itself. And there you got to watch for cord wrap and definitely need to use a breakaway USB-C cable. So there's really nothing complicated about the C-Star internal battery. You just leave it alone, let it do its thing. Um, if you want it to last longer, don't run it down. Don't use it below minus 10 degrees C, but if you have to, don't worry about it. You're just going to slowly degrade the capacity of the battery, and when your runtime gets too low for your taste, just simply replace it one of, with one of ZWO's replacement batteries. And don't forget, I'll put links to the cable, the two power banks, and the jackery that I mentioned in this video down below the video where it says more. And don't forget to like the video. Please subscribe. Thank you for watching. And until next time, clear skies.